All right. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Paul Tranny here. Good to be live on this wonderful uh, Friday. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to talk about typography manipulation and dealing with type in Photoshop. Let's start with this one. Let's start with this world word life. Okay. So I kind of come over here. Here, here we could see it. This word life. Uh, how is this made, or how how would you actually tackle this? Well, let's have this word life. Type it in. Nine times out of ten, um, you're going to be using uh, sort of a probably a sans serif font. Since you're in Photoshop and you're combine, combining this with imagery, you want the font to be as simple as possible. This one is probably the most basic font ever, by the way. Alfran, I'm not even Al Alfarn. Um, and uh, so, so how would we do this? How do we make this look 3D? So what would people do? Like, I don't know, you would just probably like, I don't know, am I gonna duplicate that layer and like move it over and like, I don't know, do I add a drop shadow? I don't know how to do this, right? We could do that. We can add that drop shadow. Let's actually try that. Drop shadow, distance, like that. That's the best we can do with layer styles. But I want that long, gorgeous shadow. So in order to do that, let's actually make this 3D. So um, here, we go. here we have life. I usually like to open up the 3D panel, super easy and friendly. I have my text selected, and I'm gonna say, hey, you know what, extrude that text. Click Create. It's gonna extrude it and actually changes my 3D panel. It gives me my text with all the different materials, the lighting and all that fun stuff. And what did it do? Yeah, there it is. Fantastic, right? I can use my Move tool and like, rot let's undo that, oh, let's redo. I, I have literally, I'm so hard on my keyboard, I literally broke the command key. <laughs> uh, I can select scene, and now I'll use the move tool to adjust the scene, right? We have that 3D look. Command H, we can hide it. Okay, so we're heading the right direction with some of this, right? We can see that. We could rotate this text. Um, notice how there's a shadow there, right? So I can say, hey, you know what? For the scene, Cancel, sorry about that. Here we go, we'll go to the current view. For the current view, let's just go ahead and make it the default view. So there's the front view, right? Look at my light source, by the way. Um, my light source is right here, so I can actually start to get that long shadow if I want to. Current view, let's like rotate this up. You start to see this shadow. Oh yeah, that shadow is what I want. Okay, so you ready for this? We're going to take this life. We'll just, I think this is the easiest way to do it. Uh, rotate it. Let's rotate it up. Let's actually literally grab this object. Oh, look, rotate tool. Rotate it. So it's standing on its head. And guess what? You have individual properties for that. You're saying, hey, rotate it 90 degrees, not 72. Because again, you'll work with those controls and you realize I need something exact. Let's have it stand up. Boom, it's standing up. Guess what? We'll grab the current view. There's my long shadow, right? And now I can start to play with that light and get that long shadow, right? Just like so. Let's go to current view real fast. Let's change this to the top view. And now we have that flat look and uh, the uh, ability to control the, um, the light source, right? By the way, um, this gets a little, this even gets more interesting, right? I have this long shadow. It's sharp. How do I change the color of things? First off, what if I would have misspelled this? I can literally select the, the text, which happens to be 3D. I'll go over here to my properties panel. You see this, Austin? Check this out. 3D is cool. My properties panel, look, I can change the extrusion and do all sorts of crazy things. And I can also just edit source. Click. Oh, thank you very much. There it is. Come in here, change this to live like that. Save it, close it. And then you can see it's obviously changed there. 
Ah, awesome. Ray, I'm so glad you like this. So again, this gives you like so much flexibility. It's crazy. And that's why I love it. It does take a little, a little time to work out because it's all going to be, um, it's all a matter of what you have selected in your 3D panel. So consider this your like new layers panel. Be aware of what's selected because that's what you're going to move using the move tool, right? Right now I'm selecting light and I'm moving it accordingly, right? I can go into environment, by the way. Let me show you a couple more things. I want to change the, uh, sh let me just see if I get this right, shadow color. No. Color of the environment. Clicking OK. Uh, here we go. Yes, it is the shadow. I want to change the color of the shadow to red. It's only at 60%. We'll crank that up even more, up to 100%. And we'll take that color down to zero. That doesn't matter, but hide. There we go. So there's the idea, right? We can see that red shadow. Now, um, let me show you one more thing real fast. Ready for this? I have about 10 minutes. I'll go into current view. I'll, I'll manipulate this accordingly. Maybe I want to change this a certain way. This actually looks pretty good. I would like these hard lines, by the way. I really like these hard lines. Let's rotate it. I don't know, some, some sort of way. Uh, but I wanted to show you some of the render settings. Command H, here we go. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. Um, wait for it. I just wanted to show some of the sides and let's just go ahead and turn off the shadows altogether. There we go. Um, environment, I'm gonna crank this up a little bit. Right, so you have these different, um, there we go, different shades of gray. I just wanted to point out right in here, if you select the scene, you actually have the ability to do like an unlit texture. So if you ever want a really flat style, that's what unlit texture does. Now I have this flat style, uh, which might be what I want if I'm doing something maybe at an angle like that, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's move on from there. Uh, what I ended up doing, by the way, to make this, we can turn on L, I, F, E, How's these, how do these get changed? Well, the environment is different. The shadow color for each one and environment is just a different color. And that's how you get this. I could render it out now and then it will be clean because I get it. It's not clean right now. Um, it, it, once I render it out, it's going to be perfectly fine. Okay, so let's kind of go on to this uh, a little further. <laughs> Uh, Michelle, I'm sorry. I do not mean to cause strife between you and your husband and if you end up, you know, playing with 3D all night. But let me take this to the next level as well. Something like this. Look at this. This is like super cool, right? This done in a 3D fashion, which I absolutely love, right? So again, look at this. Give me that flexibility. Look. Shoop, 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 shoop. Very cool, right? How is this done? This is all about mapping text onto a 3D cube. Okay, so turning that off, we'll go in here. Uh, right over here, instead of making an extrusion from something there, we can say, hey, you know what? Make a cube, you know? Use one of these preset shapes. Everything's made up of basic shapes, right? There's my cube, click Create, and here I have it. Same idea, Command H, there it is. Uh, and I can kind of rotate that around. Ooh, this is interesting. That's interesting. Look at how it made it purple. It's because my layer that I had selected was purple. So it will take whatever you have and map that as the image uh, right on there. But I'm just gonna do a new layer and do cube. Um, really fast, again, I wanna rush through this because I don't have a lot of time. Let's kind of move this over. We get how to manipulate this all day long. We want to put some text on this, right? Move this over. Zoop. 
Ah, uh, I need it. I wanted to get into displacement maps too. But here's my uh, object. It's going to be the front material. So here, front material. We go into properties. Here's the material. We could edit this texture, and this is the material. And all I need to do is add some type right in here. Um, so. Uh, uh, e L E Michelle. There you go. Here you are, Michelle. Taking this, zoop, making it larger. That's just called a default, you know, layer right there, Michelle. We'll take the right side as well. Edit that texture. And is it okay if I use your name? I should have asked. Is that okay, Michelle? I'm sorry. Don't. I hope it's okay. <laughs> should, probably should have asked. Right. Typically what I do in these two situations, since I want these to be the exact same, um, I will open up the front material, put this off to the side, on this side. This is my right material. Why are those different sizes? I don't know. But either way, I would want to line those up potentially. Uh, you get the idea. Going back into my crayons PSD, we could see it right there. Um, and again, we just put that on a box. We go into the properties for it. Um, I could take the opacity down. There's a couple other things I'd want to do. I don't really have time to get into it. Um, but you'd want to, if you want to knock out the actual texture, um, you know, what I'd actually do is I would just change this. Let's just change that to, you know, that color. I'm just going to make this easy by changing those colors like so. Current view, no, scene, unlit texture. Right, here's your unlit texture now. And uh, taking this cube, we can rotate it. Right, so there you go. There you have your sort of like your 3D um, text on a block, giving you full control uh, is the idea, right? And you can see that's how this is put together as well. As I turn this on, this is done the same way, right? Zooming out, this is the block. We can select the front material. Guess what? The front from front material is that text as expected. Okay. Done. Done. Full control. Throw a little pizzazz on it right there, just with um, a gradient blend mode, and you can see you have that. Oops. Undo. you know, ability to manipulate this all day long. Cool. Uh, oh, Michelle, you're too kind. So hopefully this, this again, gets you inspired. My goal was to show you how to do things non-destructively as well. You know, you want to be able to have that text. The text is still editable, editable because they're individual materials, right? We can see them right in here, right? We get how that works. Uh, let's close that one. Same thing for the Fahrenheit 451. All this text editable. Um, editable text this is editable because chances are i would misspell this german word right and that's the goal keep things editable uh so you can go back in and change it later based on you or the client uh, and then move forward from there